Hi guys, in 2017, a video appeared showing someone in London Speaker's Corner deliver a pitiful debate praising Islam. And then another video was published making false claims about Islam and deceiving unsuspecting pedestrians. Now, when I critiqued the videos using data, facts and correct information, I was inundated by claims from some zealous Muslims that I was spreading hate, that I was violating copyright laws. And of course, as a knee-jerk reaction by YouTube, my channel was subsequently taken down, videos removed. Now, I appealed the decision and someone physically looked at my videos and then compared them to the claims attached to the content and they found nothing wrong, contrary to what had been claimed by these scared Muslims. My channel was put back and all my videos were reinstated. It was just a case of retaliation using false claims to apply censorship as a weapon, where mental and civilized capabilities were not available to them. Now, what happened to the dishonest Muslims who initiated the false claims? Uh, nothing. I mean, they illegally use censorship to try and silence the voice of reason. And actually, I hired a lawyer who took three weeks to assess the situation. And when he came back, he said it would take something like three lawyers in three countries and around 50,000 bucks to indict the criminals. Now, that is exactly why they abuse the system so often. They know nothing will be done due to the horrendous cost and YouTube just simply doesn't care. Now, where I would never do this due to my reputation and personal integrity and moral compass, the dishonest Muslims on these channels, they don't care about ethics, integrity and honesty. I do. Well, anyway, so much for the backdrop and some context. Now, what triggered this specific video is that in mid-2020, a discussion was advertised by the Muslims of the SC Dawa, the Speaker's Corner Dawa channel, where people could ask to join a panel and answer a simple question. Is atheism rational? Now, this appealed to me, okay, because number one, there's no good reason to believe gods exist, so I don't. And there's no attributes, no position, no beliefs, no claims. But does that make me an atheist? Now, since this is one of my pet peeves, let me briefly explain it. Bear with me. Now, but like what, a thousand years ago, people were scared of us. So they invented this derogatory term, which became popular 500 years ago from godless person one who denies the existence of a supreme intelligent being to whom moral obligation is due. And this comes from the Greek atheos, without God, forming words for religious concepts. The ancient Greek noun was atheotes, ungodliness, a derogatory term to set apart the good theist, believing gods exist, and a bad atheist, those not believing gods exist, even denying their very existence to cover up the truth. Then people started coming up with even worse ideas, namely atheism, which would mean practicing or being someone who does not believe gods exist. Now, I find that pretty ridiculous. I find that demeaning and incredibly condescending because I don't identify as someone I am not. Like I'm not a, ra no, sorry. I am not a, a racist. <laughs> it's difficult to even say this. Like I'm not an a racist and don't practice a racism. Okay. The same is true for not being an a dragonist, fervently practicing a dragonism. I think you get the point. And by the way, not believing dragons exist in no way supports or negates anything. All right. And second, I find using rational, critical and logical thinking combined with using logical reasoning highly compelling because it enables me to make an informed decision on anything, including dragons and gods. 
Now, the title of the stream in this, this video was a question. Is atheism rational? And invites atheists to call in and make their case. And it clearly states, join us live. But when these atheists do, some are blocked because Islam apologists are scared of these atheists. Why? Well, the apologists have no convincing arguments for their silly belief. And if you do manage to get there, you find they don't even have an understanding of the word rational. Anyway, days before the stream even started, I checked whether or not my various accounts were still blocked. And I found, yeah, some were. And one they didn't know of wasn't. As you can see here, this comment is visible and my others are not. Now, it's common practice on Islam apologist videos to find critical comments being censored. And the low comment count, even when the viewing count is quite high, is to me a further indication of this. So when the stream started, I clicked on the supply link to join the panel and answer the question. Well, a normal Muslim would simply be asked to furnish an email address and username and would be transferred backstage to a waiting area. But the account I was using was blocked and I could not join. So I logged out and used a different account, blocked. I tried another and was finally let into the backstage waiting area. And this can be seen here. Now, after a few minutes, I was kicked out and I could not rejoin. It, it was blocked. So it seems somebody recognized my account and quickly removed me in full view of the camera. Have they no decency? Don't they have any kind of, I, I don't know what to call this. Anyway, I eventually used my skeptic account, which nobody there seems to know of, and was finally let on, and I answered the question. Now, there, what was quite funny is there was an awkward moment when the guys recognized who I am, and true to form, Hamza Tzortzis immediately misrepresented what I had said when I was offering a deliberately neutral and generic analogy, because I was trying to be polite. He also came up with arguments I had conclusively refuted a few years ago, and I know that he knows, but he still repeated what he knew was false. And then hijab then, then tried his usual clown act with red herrings and trying to drag the goalpost to a desired position by questioning my definitions that I had provided. Now, he, he knows he is the one who is making the claims that his favorite creator God exists. But he also knows he has nothing to back up his claims. And that is why he's desperately trying to shift the burden of proof by using a highly dishonest tactic of throwing around these red herrings, building strawmen, and then trying to get me to argue that instead of this original claim. And this is regardless that even Tzortzis stepped in to correct him. Just to reiterate my definitions, and I know to some people this is this is mundane and, and quite stupid, but if I take a table, so the table is a table, and the table plus red makes it a red table. Now, the table plus nothing leaves it as a table, so it doesn't change. There, there's no other attributes. In other words, there's, there's nothing assigned to this. The same goes for a person, and, and, and then the, the God belief, where a person plus the God belief is a theist. But the person plus nothing is a person. So there's no attributes, no position, no beliefs, no claims. And maybe my repeating this often will sink in and eventually serve to explain my reasoning. So a theist, a person who believes their favorite God exists and interacts with them. I think that's clear. So the atheist is a person who does not believe this. Okay, and atheism is said to be practicing atheist, which is nonsensical. But okay, look, I, I just have to accept both these terms and, you know, just to have a conversation. And also, there is no real lack of belief since lack is not having enough of something. And I don't need more unwarranted belief regarding some silly fairy tale in my life. Really, trust me, I don't. 
But these are all fringe points, actually, okay, mere side issues. The most important thing in my eyes are the definitions to know what we're talking about. So the ones I presented in the answering of the question on the live stream are rational, which is an adjective, which is da 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 and then the opposite would be irrational, and then reason would be this. So rational is not the same as reason, and rational does not only pertain to reason. Okay, they're very different things. So in my eyes, it is rational to reject claims made without evidence, especially when these are humongous claims with huge possible consequences. It is rational to ignore emotions, sensations, feelings, or plain wishful thinking when contemplating options and alternatives to a proposition of such huge proportions. Now, th there were some open questions, but I was quickly removed and kicked out without being able to rejoin, which means this account is now also blocked on Speaker's Corner Dawa. The following week, I survived only a few minutes in the comment section, in the chat section, before I was silenced by hypocrites who can't handle facts. They see Islam is collapsing. And instead of finding positive reasons to maintain it, they try and find negative arguments to belittle those they can't convince using intellectual means. But hey, this is not supposed to be a detailed analysis of the encounter since we did that as a case file on um, Islamic apologists on the Gin and Tonic Show. So my question is, SC Dawa, Speaker's Corner Dawa, Quo Vadis? Where are you going with all this and what is your point? It seems all these events have piqued my interest and pushed me to take a bit of a closer look at this SC Dawa channel and what it offers and how this is presented. Now, I've established four simple points as criteria in, in different segments. It's the format, the presentation, the contents and the impact. All right, so it's format, presentation, contents and the impact it has at the end of the day. Now, in between, the, the, I will look at some of the details in each segment and see if I can classify some of the material they provide and come up with descriptions that will help others analyze the contents of their videos more easily when it is compared with reality. This will also show other Islam apologists and non-Muslims alike how incredibly easy it is to refute, debunk and ridicule apologists' claims. It also helps apologists come up with more sophisticated and intellectually stimulating arguments. So instead of blocking and censoring me, they should be grateful for the service I am providing to help them improve their standards. Because if I can rip your trivial ramblings apart, so can anyone else. And it doesn't matter how often you misuse words like epistemology or transcendent or external particularizer. <laughs> okay, so if I now apply this to the call-in stream I mentioned earlier, we immediately noticed it was one and a half hours of people, maximum two, joining a static panel of four Muslims, where each Muslim in turn was asked to voice their opinion on something which was tedious and boring. When it was my turn, I pointed this out and we did have somewhat of a discussion, but it was stifled by interruptions and side issues. And come on, the title itself is misleading, as only specific people were allowed in. And known critics like Abdullah Samia or Farhan Qureshi were not allowed on and were banned. And here's Samir explaining the very similar treatment as I had experienced. So I'm not the only one. The initial procedure, well, come on, it was mind numbing. Where instead of letting the non muslims speak, they were told to ask a question and leave. And each panel member would then throw in their opinion. Now, what does that have to do with atheists being asked why they are being rational when rejecting unsubstantiated claims? Nothing. The presentation was incredibly boring, with panel members somehow combing themselves or even brushing their teeth while atheists were talking. That's a poor show. It shows the built-in disregard they have for non-Muslim guests and the 
or the rest was just standard streaming quality, with moderators in the background nervously fiddling with settings, microphones, and, and muting and unmuting, and taking out or bringing back visitors or, or clearing everybody out. I mean, it was pathetic, highly incompetent. We, okay, we're not professionals, okay, but the standard and, and just the expectation on our show is much higher than this and much more streamlined and structured. The contents was standard Islam apologetics. Empty claims, no facts, just fabrication and wishful thinking. The first thing, for example, that, that Sorsis was saying, the question was, is atheism irrational? Is atheism is irrational? wrong, of course. This was followed by a false claim, a dishonest claim. Not exactly a good start, is it? And then he rambles on and on about biology, cosmology, and all sorts of irrelevant topics which have nothing to do with the fact that I simply don't believe gods exist without a good reason. It's a simple application of Hitchens' razor, where something claimed without evidence can be rejected without evidence. It's frightfully simple. But it seems to me that the Islamic apologists have realized now that non-believers are the biggest threat to them simply because of the rational and critical thinking. And they have nothing in their arsenal to counter this. The comments and the fact that so many known atheists were blocked to me indicates that they were trying to go for the low-hanging fruit, atheists who have not given this much thought. And this is reflected in the replies delivered by the men with beards on the panel. Tzortzis just proposes false claims, Subur stays out of it, Imran mis simply misrepresents atheists, and the man in a car hijab doesn't get it, as is expected. His usual nonsense, you know, the, the word games, as in, and, and you need to, this is incredible. He, this is what he said. If you say you don't know, you must know before you can say you don't know. Because by saying I don't know, you're effectively saying I know that I don't know. Because you have to know that you don't know. You can <laughs> this is a perfect example of the childish level that was being propagated here. It demonstrates why nobody takes this guy and his clown act seriously. Nobody but he himself, that is. What is telling is that the other Muslims simply nod when he is fabricating this stuff. Is this really the best Islam has to offer? What was interesting is that caller after caller smacked and slapped the Muslims around and they still felt superior. They were shown over and over how being an atheist, if I use this, is rational. And they simply did not understand it. They, well, the Muslims, that is, were shown again and again that they did not really understand what was going on and how their understanding of epistemology, this, this knowledge and belief, were flawed. It was restricted by, well, A, the Islam virus running amok in their brains and B, their flavor of Islam, the traditional and backward Wahhabism. Imran even had to retreat all the way to a presuppositional stance and one that can be easily shot down within seconds. In summary, the contents of the stream was pitiful, to say the least. It demonstrated that Islam is collapsing for a reason. The positive, though, is that after I have been complaining for years now about them constantly talking about atheists, and they were too afraid to talk to us, and now, finally, they had the guts to do so. They failed, but at least I hope they learned why they are always failing so badly when arguing with atheists. So, in all, this was an interesting video to watch and equally interesting to analyze. And then here to eventually point out the inability of Islam apologists to come up with any convincing arguments or ideas or points to substantiate their extraordinary claims. I understand now what speakers call Adawa, this Esidawa, is trying to do with their rather childish, superficial and really primitive propaganda. I also see that they are failing when they can't find some persuasive arguments why someone should believe what they believe. That's it. I'll see you next time in another video, I hope. Thanks for your time. Bye.